Wake up, Lufar Nation. It's 8 a.m. and a beautiful 51 degrees in New Orleans. You're listening to Lo-Fi Poly Sci. Ooh, yeah, it's your Monday morning edition of the Lo-Fi Poly Sci Podcast. I'm your host, Michael Pickering, here to talk about our famous question. What's going on in the world today? And we'll get you that weekend cinema box office support and your five-day weather forecast in just a minute. But for now, straight to it, the news, fresh off that press. And we start off with an update to the situation in civil war in Ethiopia. As the United Nations has announced that it is starting a formal investigation into human rights violations on all sides of the war in the country. And the Ethiopian government? Well, they seem pretty pissed about this. Calls of neocolonization are being thrown around, implying that Western countries are the ones really responsible for this new investigation. And the government is sticking to its claim that everything in the country is democratically run and going just fine. They are fighting rebels, insurgents. And an ambassador of the country stated, they will not cooperate with this investigation, as there's already a similar investigation going on in the country, and that this is just repetitive and counterproductive and completely neocolonization. Western countries trying to control politics in a developing country. And you know what? They're not entirely wrong. I mean, the United Nations is an organization that was created by, and highly funded by, and greatly influenced by, Western democratic countries. Though realistically today, the UN cannot do that much without the approval of non-Western countries. But still, Ethiopia's point about neocolonization and other states trying to get all up in their business? Well, that's exactly what this is. In their view, this is a civil war, period. And other countries, theoretically, should not have any place in a civil war. Although in today's world, every civil war has people from other countries getting involved, and that's been the case for a very long time, at least since the end of World War II and the beginning of the Cold War. But this whole thing gets to the bare bones core of what the United Nations was created for and what it has the power to do. And the question is, does the United Nations have the right or the obligation to protect universal human rights and punish violators of human rights? If your answer is no, then Ethiopia is right. And furthermore, anywhere by anyone that violates human rights then in your answer, you are saying, sorry, people, you're screwed. Not my problem. You're opening the floodgates to human rights violations to be done all over the world because everyone will know there's no punishment for doing so. On the flip side, if you think the United Nations does have the right and the obligation to protect human rights, well, then Ethiopia just has to deal with it. But you know, this is not an easy issue, people. And what do you think? Should the United Nations protect human rights around the world? Write in. I'm curious your thoughts. Now let's head over to Chile for the latest and final update to the presidential runoff in the election there. And our winner, Gabriel Boric of the Social Convergence Party, a leftist party for all those who aren't sure what that party stands for. And at the moment of this recording, he's up 55.5% with 83% of the vote in. And he's gaining ground. But what does this mean for Chile moving forward? You know, question mark? Well, firstly, it means their president is toward the ideological left. But other than that, it's really a wait and see kind of thing. Remember, Chile is in the process of rewriting their constitution, which should be done this summer. And in many ways, how their constitution looks will very much inform all of us about what it really means that President Gabriel Boric has won the election. So one chapter closed, another one started. And such is the story about what's going on in the world today. It's a never-ending book, I know, I know. Now let's go ahead and switch gears to that weekend box office report, and let's see just what movies everyone's going out and see this weekend. And coming in at number five, Nightmare Alley with $2.9 million at the box office. Number four, Ghostbusters Afterlife, still kicking it in the top five with another 3.4 mil. Number three, West Side Story, with $3.41 million. Number two, Encanto, at $6.5 million. And number one, Spider-Man, No Way Home, 
with $253 million at the box office in the U.S., and another $334 million internationally, bringing its worldwide total for just its opening weekend to $587 million. This movie, a Spider-Man movie, did half a billion dollars this weekend globally. Shit. For any of you who thought cinemas were going dead and streaming was the new thing, I think Disney's Marvel Studios has a bit to say about that. I mean, this is big, people. This could be the first movie in well over a year and a half to hit over a billion dollars at the box office, which was the trend, the normal thing for big Marvel movies to do before. And if I've said it before, I'll say it again. Don't you ever feel sorry for Disney. Mm -mm -mm -mm. And write in, let us know if you went out to the movies this weekend. And what did you go see? What did you eat? Did you have an icy? What flavor icy? I'm still so curious. All right, next up, back to it. Let's head to a concluding update for our story in Haiti about the 17 kidnapped victims, where previously five had been released, but now the remaining 12 have been released as well. So good news, all of them are going home. And how, you asked, did this release take place? Question mark. Well, we don't know. And no one is talking. They were originally ransomed for $1 million each, and there has been no word on if that money was paid or anything. All we know is the situation is over, and all the victims have been released after two months. This still leaves a whole lot of questions, and we will most certainly be watching to see if any more information comes out. Because powerful gangs that kidnap 17 missionaries asking for $17 million? Well, they don't release people out of the goodness of their heart. So we'll keep you posted if we hear anything moving forward. All right, this next one. Well, let me just go ahead and read the headline from the BBC for starters. Headline. AI argues for and against itself in Oxford Union debate. So, they give this artificial intelligence program a shit ton of data, including all of Wikipedia, a whole bunch of English newspapers, and some Reddit posts. Why Reddit? Who knows? But, and then from this, the AI had to debate itself on whether AI was ethical or not, good or not, basically dangerous or not. And seeing as it argued both sides, well, there was no winner because it argued both sides. But give this one a read, although... Not really a complete AI, because it was only given a certain amount of information. Still interesting. And really, I want to send a question out there to you lo-fi listeners. What do you think about artificial intelligence? A good thing? Or not? Write in, because as always, I'm curious your thoughts. Now let's switch gears for a minute and get you that Metro New Orleans weather report. For Monday, today, we have a high of 56 and a low of 49. And we are indeed cloudy with a chance of meatballs right around 80%. So be sure to bring your anti-meatball umbrellas with you today. And Tuesday and Wednesday, very low chance of meatballs. And we're going to get some sun with highs in the lower 60s and lows in the higher 40s. Thursday, no rain and starting to warm up a bit, 73 to 62. And Friday, really warming up right before Christmas because, of course it is, it's New Orleans. If you can't wear shorts for Christmas, then it's not a holiday. People have to be able to go outside and throw out the old football or whatever they call it. Of course, not me. I'm a mathlete, not an athlete. But for Friday and Saturday, which are Christmas Eve and Christmas Day, little to no chance of rain, mostly sunny and temperatures between 80 to 65 degrees. 80 degrees in December. Welcome to New Orleans. And that's your weekly Metro Weather Report. And a last piece of news to send you on your way for the day. A bit of housekeeping for us. So tomorrow, we will have a top 10 list like normal. Not spoiling what it's going to be about, though. And Wednesday, we're releasing Lo-Fi poli very own Lo-Fi Study Beats Volume 1. A six-track mix of our own creation that we've been working on for a long time. Wednesday, we'll release the full volume, a 25-minute drop. Then each day after, we'll release each track solo. Then next week, we're going to be picking back up again with some end-of-the-year thoughts and talk about New Year's resolutions 
and how they are or are not complete bullshit. We'll see, we'll see. So I'll talk to you tomorrow, lo-fi listeners. And that's your Monday morning edition of What's Going On in the World Today. Interested in writing into the show? Follow us on YouTube, Instagram, myself on LinkedIn, email us, let your voice be heard. Always remember that lo-fi poli is more than just me. It's the we that we be. Peace and well-being to all my human beings out there. Much love and always the best. Pickering, signing off.